All right, today we're going to do uh, this cold blue light review here uh, by Marvin K and Park Godwin, Parky, Parky Godwin. I don't know. Um, obviously, the first thing that you notice is that color is reflective. It's blue reflective. It's mesmerizing. Um, this is a Ghost Story from 1983, put out by Charter, Charter Books. Uh, a little bit about the author, um, Marvin Kay, who is still alive. Uh, a horror mystery writer. Uh, looks like he wrote a non-fiction book called The Handbook of Mental Magic. It's about reading people's minds. Uh, not like, you know, magic, like with a K, but... Like magic, like rabbit out of a hat. Magic. Um, he is the... Oh, he compiles many anthologies, horror anthologies, that look pretty awesome. Actually, I haven't seen... I haven't read any of them, but they look impressive. He's the editor of the Sherlock Holmes Mystery Magazine and editor and co-publisher of Weird Tales Magazine, which I didn't even realize was still a thing. So they're still they still make them. There was actually just a recent issue in 2023, uh, and it had like Hellboy on the cover. Uh, so it was like a new Hellboy story, um, but non-comic, I, I guess. I don't know. I didn't really look too much into it, but it was interesting to see that it still existed. Uh, Park Godwin uh, is deceased, 2013. He mostly wrote these graphic novel series called... Witch, W-I-T-C-H, which was like a teen fiction looking thing, uh, or young, young adult, young adult fiction, cult stuff, I don't know, and, uh, fantasy novels with, like, they would take the famous characters and put them in a different setting, like Robin Hood and dinosaurs or something, I don't know. So, Cold Blue Light, uh, is a classic ghost story uh, starts off very similar to House on Haunted Hill the movie I have never actually read the book uh, I'm waiting until I find like a cool old copy because I'm snooty like that I guess I don't know uh, so I haven't read it I definitely want to though because the movie's awesome so similar to the movie they introduce the cast of characters and it's like exactly the same like it's like you here is joe bob and he's doing this because his mom's sick he sure would like some money but in this case they are um all paranormal researchers it's not like they're not getting any money for staying in this haunted house <clears throat> so the main i'd say the well i guess they're all main characters but the woman who is, owns the house is Marilyn Aubrey but her name is spelled like Merlin and I kept saying it so but I think it is Marilyn but it looks like it's spelled Merlin Merlin Aubrey uh it starts off with her like the psychologist she has all these uh like uh issues with reverting back to a child like so a traumatic experience when she was a child and so whenever she starts to feel like an adult, she goes back into this child state, and it all has to do with, like, her dead grandma and the house. So there you have the setup for the uh, the uh, antagonist. You know, obviously, is it going to be the dead grandma, the ghost of the dead grandma? She has two friends, uh, and they're both, like, clairvoyant. One is this uh, author... Uh, he's a kind of like a fam famous paranormal researcher and who also happens to be gay like a positive like gay character and then uh, a woman who is a little bit older and uh had some like life regrets where like she loved this dude when she was a kid but and he wanted to marry her but her parents were against it so he went away and she regretted it her whole life and that's you know her her life was empty so she just like goes back and thinks on this one moment one mistake you know that 
totally changed her life, which was like, you know, a bummer and it does happen. But it was good, uh, you know, catalyst for the story. So she has those two friends, and then they have a, a meeting on the paranormal, and then uh, you meet the other two characters. Uh, one is from Ireland. He's uh, also a paranormal researcher, and he, uh, you know, he has ESP abilities and clairvoyance, and he's more of an intellectual type researcher, like a half science, half paranormal. And he uh, also, uh, he happens to be uh, physically disabled, too. Um, and then, then the last one is this, like, famous philosopher, author, guy, who's kind of, like, uh, calls out fake paranormal stuff. Uh, par fake paranormal researchers. <clears throat> so he's, like, very scientific. So you just got like the very scientific guy, the half scientific guy, and then the true believers. And then they all go, so they all, this is in, I think they're in New York, and then they like get together and they all go to the Aubrey House, which is in Pennsylvania. And then once they get there, it's like, uh, you know, the each personality, whatever they think, like, the, the diehards are like, oh, I can't wait to do the seance. And then the guy who, like, the Irish guy, is like, oh, I've done some research. We need to be careful. And then the other guy, the philosopher guy, is just kind of along because he wants to hook up with the, <laughs> the young lady who owns the house. But not in, like, a sleazy way. Uh, he also has, like, this backstory where he didn't get the brakes fixed on his car and he, kills his wife and daughter so he's all like traumatized and uh so this is his first outing with like a woman after that so they get to the house and it's very like the feel is very like classic like just that era like the 30s 40s uh, when this stuff was very popular, the seances, and you see, like, the pictures of the ectoplasm coming out of, like, the people's mouths, and, um, man, yeah, that was, I really enjoyed that, and, uh, there's lots of arguments about the paranormal research and the clairvoyance and the ESP and, and all that stuff, and, and I did see some reviews where they were like, oh, it's kind of dragged it down and it made it boring, but, I mean, if you're, if you're into that, then, it was, it was good. It was like, you know, like if you read a men's adventure and they're, they go off about types of guns, you know, like when I'm reading men's adventure, I don't give a fuck about guns. Like I just want the action, you know, I just want the ridiculousness. Uh, so, if, you know, I get it. It doesn't make the story unenjoyable, but I understand what people are saying. So, like research type stuff and... <laughs> Some of the terminology is, it sounds very intelligent, but it also sounds really, like, ridiculous. Like, it's, it's, like, in Ghostbusters, even though uh, Dan Aykroyd is really into that, the paranormal and stuff, so he uses real terminology, but at the same time, he would just make stuff up, and it sounds very real. And that's kind of like what this stuff is, where you're like, it's like a pseudoscience, uh, where they just kind of like make stuff up, and it sounds impressive, like uh, you know, on YouTube, AS ASMR. Whoever made up the name is like autonomous sensory meridian response, which sounds very intelligent, but it also sounds like a oh, little shit. Like what? Like they just made up this pseudo-intellectual name for everything. So there's lots of that arguing and that terminology. So the book can kind of sound very intelligent, but when you stop and think about it, you're just like, it also sounds like, you know, like gobbledygook, just fancy words made up. But it's fun, and, you know, like I said, I really enjoy that stuff. <laughs> Even if I, I don't know if I believe it or not, but it's interesting to me. So if you're, like, into, like, paranormal research and clairvoyance, ESP, 
astral projection. Now, now it's sounding like the Ghostbusters when she's reading off the job description. It's for real. This is like exactly what this is like. Um, so yeah, you, you know, the haunted house stuff, it's all, it's creepy and it's like the ghost stuff is cool. It's not overdone. Yeah. Uh, it's class, classic style for sure. Uh, you know, there's even like the old painting of the grandma, like scowling down. They find old photos and, uh, people see stuff and I, I really enjoyed it. I, I've seen lots of people say that it's a little sloggy, but I think for this, for what it is, it was the perfect pacing. That it didn't, you don't want this kind of story to go fast uh, because, you know, that stuff isn't like, it's not a, a, a man with a hatchet, like chopping people's heads off, you know, it's, it's more uh, c cerebral. You know, it's like, is your mind playing tricks on you? Like, is this all in my mind? Is this real? Is this really happening? And I, I like that aspect of the paranormal research where it's like, is the, the manifestations that people see, is it in our heads or is it actually something that is good? It was perfect, perfect for the, the Halloween season. Uh, you know, it would have been raining here in Ohio and it's raining all throughout, like through a big part of this book. So it was like perfect, perfect setting, you know, perfect timing for me to read it. And, um, but I will say that I don't, I don't know if I would go and hunt down the second one. I think that if, if I seen it, I would definitely buy it, but I don't know if like how excited I would be to read the second one. Like this one was good. This was plenty. It actually didn't need a part two. So I don't know, we'll see. Um, yeah, let's just, you know what, let's get this up here. But not the scan, so we can see the, the reflection. It's beautiful, beautiful book.